not accept for this ends. But most of mankind do not understand Holy Quran 44 oblique 38 dash 39. He turned the attention of his followers towards the study of nature and its laws to understand them and appropriate and appreciate the glory of God. The world is not an illusion, not without purpose. It has been created with truth. The number of verses in the Quran inviting close observation of nature are several times more than those relate to prayer, fast, pilgrimage, etc., all put together. The Muslims, under its influence, began to observe nature closely, and this gave birth of the scientific spirit of observation and experiments which was unknown to the Greeks. What the Muslim botanist Ibn Bater wrote on botany after collecting plants from all parts of the world described by Mayer in his Gash Der Botanica as a monument of industry by al Burani traveled for 40 years to collect mineralogical specimens and Muslim astronomers made some observations extending even over 12 years. Aristotle wrote on physics without performing a single experiment, wrote on natural history carelessly stating without taking the trouble to ascertain the most easily verifiable fact that man have more than more teeth than animal. Galen, the greatest authority on classical anatomy, informed that the lower jaw consists of two bones, a statement which is accepted unchallenged for centuries till Abdul Latif takes the trouble to examine a human skeleton. After enumerating several instances, Robert Berifold concludes in his well-known book, The Making of Humanity, and I quote, the debt of our science to the Arabs does not consist in startling discoveries or revolutionary theories. Science owes a great deal more to the Arab culture it owes its existence, unquote. The same writer says, and I quote, the Greeks systemized, generalized, and theorized. But the patient way of generalized of investigation, the accumulation of positive knowledge, the minute methods of science, detailed and prolonged observation, experimental inquiry, were altogether alien to the Greek temperament. What we call science arose in Europe as a result of new methods of investigation, of the method of experiment, observation, measurement of the development of mathematics in a form unknown to the Greeks. The spirit and these methods are, were introduced into the European world by the Arabs. This new conception of religion, that it should also devote itself to the betterment of his life after, rather than concerned itself exclusively with super mundane affairs has led to a new orientation of moral values. Its abiding influence on the common relations of mankind in the affairs of everyday life, its deep power over the masses, its regulation of their conceptions of rights and duty, its suitability 
and adaptability to the ignorant savage and the vice philosopher alike are characteristic features of the teachings of the Prophet of Islam. Based on correct faith and right actions, but it should be most carefully borne in mind that this stress on good actions is not at the sacrifice of correctness of faith. While there are various schools of thought, one praising faith at the expense of deeds, another exhorting various acts to the detriment of correct belief, Islam is based on correct faiths and actions. Means are as important as the ends, and ends are as important as the means. It is an organic unity. Together they live and thrive. Separate them and they both decay and die. In Islam, faith cannot be divorced from action. Right knowledge should be transferred into right action to produce that right results. Those who believe and do good, they alone shall enter paradise. How often these words come in the Quran again and again, not less than 50 times these words are repeated. Contemplation is encouraged, but mere contemplation is not the goal. Those who believe and do nothing cannot exist in Islam. Those who believe and do wrong are inconceivable. Divine law is the law of effort and part of ideals. It chalks out for the men the path of eternal progress from knowledge to action and from action to satisfaction. God, there is none like unto him. But what is the correct faith from which right action spontaneously proceeds, resulting in complete satisfaction? Here, the central doctrine of Islam is the unity of God. There is no God but one God. It is the pivot from which hangs the whole teaching and practice of Islam. He is unique not only as regards his divine being, but also as regards his divine attributes. As regards the attributes of God, Islam adopts here, as in other things too, the law of golden mean. It avoids on the one hand the view of God which divests the divine beings of every attribute and rejects on the other the view which likens him to things material. The Quran says, on the one hand, there is nothing which is like him. On the other, it affirms that he is seeing, hearing, knowing. He is the king who is without a stain of fault or deficiency. The mighty ship of his power floats upon the ocean of justice and equity. He is the beneficent, the merciful. He is the guardian over all. Islam does not stop with this positive statement. It adds further, which is its most special characteristic, the negative aspect of the problem. There is no one else who is guardian over anything. He is the mender of every breakage, and no one else is the mender of any breakage. He is the restorer of any loss whatsoever. There is no God but one God above any need. The maker of bodies, creator of souls, the Lord of the Day of Judgment, and in short, in the verse of Quran, say 
call upon Allah or call upon Rahman. By whatever name you call him, it is well. For to him belong the most beautiful names. Holy Quran 17-110. Regarding the position of man in relation to the universe, the Quran says, Allah is he who has subjected to you the sea that you may sail your ships through it by his command that you seek of his bounty and that you may be grateful and he has subjected to you all that is in the heavens and on earth as for himself behold in that are signs indeed for a people who reflect Holy Quran 45-12-13. But in relation to God, the Quran says, Allah it is who has created death and life that he may test as to which of you is best in deeds. And it is he who is exalted in might of Forgiving. Holy Quran 6 7 2. In spite of free will, which he enjoys to some extent, every man is born under certain circumstances and. Con